and this uh, graph shows that the need for organic products. So, uh, again, when you use natural antibiotics for animals, we have another uh, kind of uh, tool to help us to produce organic food. So, the end of the research, again, uh, as a summary, is how can a special plant, as a wild plant shrub called Solan lycocarpum, substitute antibiotics in any sense? What you had when you use this plant in this ecosystem, which are the effects? So, what we do, we use some uh, fistulated animals. Some, some of you may not agree with the use of these animals. But when we sacrifice some of them, about uh, five or six, to collect human fluids, and we go to the lab and use test tubes, we are uh, saving million, uh, some thousand of animals to be used. So, it's the sacrifice of just one, I think, just five to use them. And so, the, each test tube can represent an animal. We mimic the same conditions of the, of the animal, and we do the tests in, in virtual systems. It's the, the main methodology is used worldwide today. So, the results. Uh, when we incubated different fractions of the plants, like the flower, the fruits, the leaf, the root, and the stem, when incubated in these test tubes, we saw that they were bro broken down in different fractions, in different levels. Okay, it tells us mainly that uh, the microbial population have used the, the cellulose on them, but some of them has really, really, really low level of breakdown. So maybe they have more secondary metabolites, which had an effect on the microbial population. As a result, they were not able to use all the cellulose uh, from the plant. Another result we've got is that when there was the broken down, they, the byproducts were the volatile fatty acids, which the animal converts, absorbs and converts into glucose to, to make uh, the protein for us. And when we incubated the fruit, it produced quite a significant amount of these uh, byproducts. The flower was the second biggest one, and the leaf, root and stem like uh, intermediate productions. It tells us uh, that the animals will manipulate the ecosystem and will further produce some extra energy together with the diet of the animals, okay? So, uh, the future research will be to screen uh, the whole uh, route, like saponins, tannins, the whole amount of chemicals we have in these plants, try to isolate them further, and to uh, see what, which are the interactions between the diet and the incubation of these plants. When we change the diet and these plants as additives, what happens? How does additives behave with different diets? And as for the research, uh, when you use these uh, natural antibiotics, what can we expect from us to, to have any benefits or not? So the conclusions. Novel plants can substitute the bionics antibiotics. Uh, we know that, but we still need to do the screening to see which uh, are the, the levels of, and the, those responsive trials, which amount of these chemicals we need to use to go to have the, the ultimate benefit we're looking for. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Chowdhury, uh, my supervisor, the School of Agriculture, and my scholarship. Thank you very much. in 2006, and why were they allowed in the first place? Well, they were allowed because there was no uh, scientific proof that there was any kind of uh, <laughs> residues in the animal food, right? And uh, they were banned because it is still controversial today because it was banned only in Europe, it's not banned in the United States yet. It was banned because there was some researches that showed that there was like uh, cross resistance when you use um, antibiotics for animals, we can have resistance from these antibiotics, so we can be affected because of that. So is there no, F so for example, the FDA, right, I don't know what it's called in the UK, yeah. um, before you introduce something, you have to pass it to the FDA. When we do that with animals, the antibiotics didn't have to be passed by some governing body before they were used in animals? Yeah, yeah, it has to be passed, yeah. So then how were they allowed, initially? They were allowed because they would benefit from the animals. For the wel welfare point of view, the animals had more welfare, biggest production, cheapest production. So why didn't it identify that they produce a cross-residue in 
in yeah, there was just speculations about, but there was no scientific proof. Yeah. And after what we used, we had like we, we could go to supermarkets and collect products and test them. And after that, started the discussion, <laughs> and so they were burned because of that. But it had to be used for like 20 years first to to start all the discussions. And why is it not banned in the UK in the US? Because the legislation is still in the, still in the process of discussion. But like some uh, companies like McDonald's, they just buy meat and products from farmers which don't use them anymore. But I think it's going to be banned in the whole world. methods you use like nylon sacos and you put the feed inside and just put inside the animal okay and because all the conditions are the animal itself so it's appropriate to, to show pro, uh, pregnant results but you need lots of animals and this is very costly so for us it's better to go for the test tubes because we can have hundreds 200 test tubes and we can have uh, more easily conditions to work How to destroy the plants? Uh, is there going to be any conflict with the human diet? Or do, we, do we depend on that already as a food source? So we should, uh, no. Yeah. Uh, if I understood your point, uh, these are wild plants which are not bred by, for human beings. They're not used by us in the diet. They're just in, in the wild and areas which are devastated and they grow naturally. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, we started the interest to, to study these plants because we know that. Uh, wild wolves and wild animals use these plants to tackle like kidney worms and uh, worms which are in the di digestive systems. We know that these animals cannot survive without these plants. And they're indigenous to UK and Europe? No, they are mainly in tropical areas. So we have to introduce them into... No, we can produce the, the powder and distract it over there and import here. Oh, so they wouldn't eat it naturally occurring in the ground? You would no. Feed yeah, if you feed to the animal, uh, you mix in the diet. Okay. Yeah. But they're from tropical areas? Yeah, it's a uh, wolf from tropical areas, yeah. Wolf. It's called, because uh, you see the name of the species is called Solano Lycocarpon, and Lyco from the Greek means wolf. So it was, the it was named because the scientists of like 300 years ago, they saw that the wolf uh, just had that fruit in the diet. So okay. that was named the species mm -hmm. because of the wolf. But it's wolf from tropical areas. Thank you very much.